Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before we are dismissed tonight, we're going to pray and we're going to just rebuke any kind of storm damage from that storm tonight. The devil ain't going to come in here and tear up our territory. I see it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I had a dream of the morning. I dreamed I was sitting down with Kendall Copeland. Oh. Yeah. And another man, I don't know who the other man was, but I was Ken Copeland and he had dark and black hair. Y'all know that he dyes his hair dark. I had a ball spot right here. Yeah. You know, in the dream. And we were talking about trumpets. And uh, he uh, he wasn't too much agreeing with me. He was saying something about trumpets, and I would say something, and he didn't disagree, but he didn't necessarily agree. And we got to talk about trumpets in heaven. And I was going to tell him that what I thought the significance of trumpets in heaven were going to be, but he, he kept talking and didn't give me a chance. So it, it, it was like the moment went by. So, there was a dream. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. Thank you, Lord. Y'all know where we have that? John chapter 1. Yes. Thank y'all for coming tonight. You were coming. You're welcome. I don't know if it's because it's Easter week or what, but this has been one of those weeks where from the time my feet hit the floor to bedtime, it's been one, go, do, work. I just can't get nothing done, party, something like that, but everything getting done good. Ain't that amazing? Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters. Lord, for the spirit and the fellowship that we've enjoyed, the songs, Father God. Lord, we ask you to make us one. Amen, Lord. For there's nothing, Lord, there's not much better than being made one with those around you. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us the same spirit. Lord, the same heart and the same desire, Father God. We just give you praise tonight because we know that you are with us. And we thank you, Lord, for what we're going to be taught tonight by your precious spirit, God. And we receive it, the, the engrafting word with meekness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, then. Uh, John chapter 1, and we're just going to start off from the beginning again, all right? Because this, to me, this first few verses uh, in John chapter 1... Amen. Uh, is so significant. Mm -hmm. There is so much heat. I mean, it is just chock full of truth and revelation for the child of God. Amen. And so the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So, uh, Jesus was always. He did, we did not was not a created being, amen. He was with God in the beginning, amen. Hallelujah. He was the Word of God. How many of you know when you uh, want to know somebody, you learn a great deal about them by what they say? Amen. Yes. In fact, you don't really know a person until they open their mouth. You can look at them and you can develop an opinion of them and make a judgment of them, amen. But I tell you, uh, uh, there's been a lot of times in my life where after I listened to somebody for a little bit, I changed my mind <laughs> about what I 
thought of them. You know what I mean? Amen. So the Word of God is a revelation of God. Amen. And it reveals His will and who He is and, and it's magnificent. Praise God. And uh, so uh, uh, the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. So uh, everything was made by the Word of God. Everything. In fact, in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 16, Paul said, for by Him, talking about Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether they were thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by Him and for Him. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like that. I like that. Amen. Praise God. By Him and for Him. And so, you know, sometimes we don't like ourselves. Sometimes, you know, we get unhappy with who we are and, and what we are. But you have to remember, amen, you were created by Him and for Him. And He knew what He was getting when He made you. You know, I... We learned a great lesson from Brother Tim. He's not here tonight. But have y'all seen his work? Some of the things in it that he has went and drove up out of the woods that just the majority of people would burn it. They would find no value in it and could find no way of using it much for nothing. Yet, amen, he takes those twisted, gnarly Vines and stuff, and he has created beautiful chairs and all kinds of woodwork and stuff that he does in that stuff. And so uh, we can learn a lesson from this when we, because before we get through this chapter, amen, when Jesus starts calling his disciples, amen, when he saw Peter again, he, he, you know, he said, Your name is Peter, or, which means rock. Amen. How many of you know Peter didn't? Seem like much of a rock. Did he? He didn't seem like much of a rock, but that's what Jesus said. I don't want to make a rock out of you, boy. I'm going to make you solid. Amen. And how many of you know he became one of the main leaders of, of the Christian church, amen, in his day, amen, because of what Jesus took and made out of him. Amen. And so God's still working on us. He is me anyway, all right? Maybe he's still with you. I, I don't know, but he's still working on me. I need it. I can tell you that right now. Amen. I'm like an old, old uh, boy out car. I mean, it's been drug up on this shade tree out there. You got to work on that stuff. Keep it going. But anyway, so he was in the beginning, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that is made. Amen. Nothing. Praise God. All right. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, uh, when we think about this uh, light and life, amen, we see it everywhere. We see it everywhere. Do you hear me? Light and life, amen, which was created by him. And so, uh, like the sermon that I preached, amen, who seen Jesus, amen. If you, when you see good, when you see light, when you see light, if it be a bird, if it be, if it, if it be a fish swimming in the water, if it be a beautiful tree, if it, if it's, if it be uh, the, the gentle breeze of wind that you feel blowing on you, if it's the warmth of the sunshine, amen, that's him. Amen. That's a manifestation of Him. That's the Word, amen, that has been made, amen, that has been brought into being, amen. Hallelujah. And so we see that, that the man, Jesus Christ, also was the Word, amen, that was brought, or the Bible says, made flesh, amen. The Word made flesh, amen. Praise God. So that's, that was the Word also. And when people saw Him, 
most of them didn't recognize it. They, they thought it was just, a, you know, like, like most people do. They don't appreciate, they don't appreciate God's creation. They just take it for granted. What do you think about these people, amen, that believe in, what do you call that? Come from monkeys and stuff? Evolution. Evolution, evolution amen. Hallelujah. They believe in evolution. And, and, and you know, that's just a slap in God's face if you want to know the truth. Amen. No wonder they can't see God. No wonder they can't believe, amen, in a designer, in a creator, amen. Because they're blind. They don't see. But aren't you glad that your eyes have been opened? Yes, I'm glad my eyes have been opened. It gives me great pleasure and great joy, amen, that when I go in a walk, go for a walk, or I drive down the highway, or I sit on my porch swing, amen, that, and I see life. I just see life everywhere. I see life everywhere. And life also means knowledge, understanding. The, uh, in fact, amen, John uses these three words, amen. One is logos, the word, and that's a Greek word. And John used that, amen, throughout the book. Because the Greeks understood that to be the ultimate reason or rationale of the universe. So, you know, the Word of God is the ultimate reason and rationale. Amen. If you understand this Word, you will have understanding. Mm -hmm. If this Word brings light into your soul, into your spirit, amen, you have light. Do you hear me? Amen. And you know, it's the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. And so, you know, to have enough light in you where you realize I don't have to know everything. I don't have to see everything in the future. I don't have to be in control of everything. I don't have to have a, a lot of, of uh, material resources. Amen? Because the light tells me I'm okay. Everything's all right. God's in control. God's taking care of everything. God is with the tent. Great game. And so that light, amen, praise God, comes from Him. And people don't even realize it. People that do paint pictures, they don't realize that. That's the manifestation of the light that God's given them. They see how to do that. Isn't it amazing, amen, how different people have different talents, amen, and they're able to do, they're just able to do it. To them, it's easy. It's easy to them. Tanya, gifted, talented, David, gifted, talented, on those musical instruments, so he just sat down there and just play, and David dumps the bass, beats the drum, picks a guitar, Plays on the piano, does that stuff, you know. To me, it's, I can't see. <laughs> I don't have no life there. You know, I'm jealous if you want to know the truth. <laughs> and you know, some women cook, man, they just, they just, they can just cook. And some people that way, they can just cook. And some people are just natural mechanics. They can fix anything mechanical. They, you know, they, they've never been to college or nothing like that. But give them, put them a wrench, crowbar, and press them something in their hand. And watch them go to work again. That's the light of God given to man to be able, amen, to subdue the earth. Amen. And to make it fruitful and to multiply. Amen. And all of these blessings that we see, amen. Praise God that we give men uh, credit. For creating, amen. Or you know, look how we, how our nation is blessed. You know how these, how these, this, all this technology we have, and all this stuff. It's a credit to God. It's life that God has given to man. Exactly right. It comes from the mind of God. Yep. And people, one of these days. If they don't already know something, one of these days are going to realize, you know that idea that I thought, hey, I've got an idea. And it made them rich. 
there was an angel that come up and whispered. Mm -hmm. Was God's spirit gave them a dream in the night. Mm -hmm. They were born to do certain things. They don't even realize it's in their heart, it's in their spirit. They was born to do those things. That's the light and the life of God that's in man. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that is. And so the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, not, not. And so, you know, they don't know it. They don't comprehend the, the, the light of God. They don't comprehend it then that, that it's the presence and the glory and the will and the living word of God that is active. And God gave me a song years ago, amen, a little course uh, that very few people have ever heard me sing, but uh, when I was praying in tongues, amen, and I said to myself, well, I don't know if I'm speaking anything, I don't know, you know, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish to me. You know how your mind will battle when your spirit's praying, you know, and so I was saying this little song in tongues, and so when I got to sing it in tongues, I sang in English. You know, it was how great is God, how great, how great is God. He rules the earth in righteousness and love. His word has filled the earth and brought forth in abundance. How great is God. How great, how great is God. Mm -hmm. I always thought I'm going to write some verses for that someday, but I figured to ever do it, I'll have to get quiet and pray in tongues. True. Amen. <laughs> I'll think it start singing in tongues again. Amen. To get the verses to that, if I ever do it. But, see, I've never forgotten that. That's been years ago. And when God gives you something, when God plants something, you get something. When it comes from God, it's living. You don't forget. Life is life. Is life is there. Amen. And so, they don't comprehend it. They don't comprehend it. But how many of you realize that without Him, you can do nothing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that. You know if the light goes out, you're what? You're in darkness. You're incapable. I mean, you know, you are incapable. You're in darkness. You can't do nothing. So we have comprehended a certain amount of it. Thank you, Jesus. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, John here is uh, separating John the Baptist from Jesus because many then came to John the Baptist and asked him, are you the Messiah? Are you that prophet? Who are you? In fact, when you read it, amen, you'll find it that, that when they came to him, that's what they wanted to know. Then, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Are you the Messiah? And he and he confessed to himself, no, I am not the Messiah. And they even asked him, are you that prophet that's supposed to come? And he said, no, I am not. But actually, he was. He had the spirit of that prophet that was supposed to come. Amen. And he may not ever recognize, amen, or who uh, fully who he was. And so some people are, are that way a lot of times, amen. We don't really recognize who we are in Christ. Amen. We don't really recognize our mission. We don't really recognize, amen, uh, you know, the effect or, or the ministry or the good that we're doing. In fact, I think this is one of the greatest weapons that the devil uses against the child of God, amen, is to make you feel like that you are not doing anything. You're a nobody. You're, you're not effective. You, you, even though you're saved, even though maybe even you're going to church all the time, even though maybe you're even a pastor, I know, I know myself, my own personal self, I feel like a lot of times, you know, that I really am not accomplishing very much. You're just not doing much. You know what I mean? And so you feel that way. And so I think that's one of the greatest weapons of the devil. Amen. It's to make people. Because when John was cast into prison, amen, he began to doubt Jesus. He began to doubt himself. And, and so usually when the doubt comes, it is when you are being held captive. 
It may be by thoughts or circumstances, you know, situations. It may be by those type things that you're captive. You know, you may not literally be in jail, but you just maybe feel like I'm in a place where I can't do anything or I'm not able to do anything. Hello. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You just feel like you know what what good am I? What good am I? What good am I doing? You feel that way. So, but, so when you do, that's the darkness and you're feeling held captive. Amen. Hallelujah. But just remember this. Just remember this. Amen. You were created by him and for him. Amen. Praise God. By him and for him. And you belong to him. And just, just believe the light. Just thank God for the light. Start looking for the light. Mm-hmm. Start looking for the light. Because I guarantee you. You know what the devil's told me? Not many here tonight, I tell you what the devil's told me. The devil's told me, you know, you're a failure. You failed. You're a failure, you're a failure. And you know what I say? Well, you know, I'm not a total failure, but I have failed. I am a failure. Mm-hmm. I'm just, but I'm not a total failure. I have been, I've had some success, thank the Lord. But I haven't done what maybe I feel like my potential is. Does anybody here feel like you've done what your potential is? No. See? And so, you know, you begin to doubt yourself because you don't, you feel like you've made some bad decisions. You, you've uh, made some mistakes. you failed here and there. you failed this or that. But, you know, you... Uh, you sin, whatever, you know, you feel that way. We all do. We all do. Do you hear me? Amen, praise God. We all do. But we're His. We're His. And I like to look at it like this. is maybe a bad example, you know, but I got a dog. He's my dog. That's my dog. I bought paid for that dog. He's my dog. And I don't care what the neighbors think about it. That's their problem. He's still my dog. But he is a dog. <laughs> and he does what dogs do. He's not a man. He's a dog. He does what dogs do. He lick his rear end, you know, and he won't let me in the face. <laughs> That's what dogs do. You know, he'll go out and get fleas, get ticks, you know, and he'll bring them in the house. You know, I have to take care of that stuff. <laughs> he makes a hand comes in the state, and he finds some dead rolling in there once in a while. He'll roll in the house, come to the house, like he's just proud of himself. He'll come in there. No, I smell wonderful. <laughs> but he's a dog. That's what he is. But he's my dog. And as far as I'm concerned, because I have understanding that he's a dog, I don't expect any more out of him. Amen. <laughs> and I think sometimes, you know, we we expect too much out of people and maybe even out of ourselves and we don't let people be who they are and we don't allow ourselves to be who we are the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended not sometimes we don't comprehend amen because we focus too much on the darkness. We don't comprehend the light that's been shining us. God has called us out of the darkness, the Bible says, into his glorious, into his marvelous light. He has. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So John said, I am not him, I'm just a witness. He said, I'm just a witness. I'm just one one runner and I'm a witness. So verse 9 says, That was the true light which light of every man that cometh into the world. And I love that verse right there. That Jesus is the true light that light of every man that cometh into the world. I believe the conscious uh, that are in people. I know some people don't seem like they have much of a conscience. And they have a lot of darkness in them. Do you hear me? They do terrible things. But I believe that everybody is born with the light of God in them. And I think, think that even, you know, where the Bible's not preached or teach, taught, you know, in the Amazon or wherever, anywhere where you want to put it. I, mean, I believe men are born with a light. 
with, uh, with some kind of function, knowledge, understanding in them that there's something greater. I come from somewhere. It's just, you know, amen. And, but, you know, people do different things. The Bible says through knowledge, you know, they don't know God through knowledge and all kinds of things. You know what I mean? And so you're going to find that in heaven there's going to be a lot of really, really, really smart people that are not really going to be there. Because they're too smart. You're going to find a lot of really, really, what the world would call dumb people, everyday people, amen, hallelujah, that are going to be there simply because of this light that was in them, they saw it, desired it, the best they could, the best they could, somehow, somewhere or another. They believed in it. Might not have, might not have known what it was. But somehow or another, they believed in good. They believed in uh, just just the whole world. Just, I don't know anywhere they don't believe in uh, afterlife, some sort of afterlife. You know what I mean? So there's the light is in the world, but the world didn't know him. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Talking about the Jewish people. Amen. He came to them. They didn't receive him. They didn't know him either. They didn't know him either. They was in darkness. In fact, they said, they said, they said that we can see. In effect, Jesus said, well, because you can see, your sin remains because you're not blind. How many of you realize that one time you were blind? True. Amen. You didn't know God. You didn't recognize, amen, the goodness of God. You didn't recognize the gift of God. You didn't recognize the power of God. You didn't, you didn't have knowledge or recognize Him. You were blind. And He opened your eyes. And He made the blind to see. He came to His own, His own received Him not, but as many as received Him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we see here, of course, we don't have a problem with this. We understand this. We know you got to be born again of the Spirit. It doesn't make no difference if mom and daddy were Christians, amen, and raised you up in church. You still have to make that decision on your own. God has given to whosoever will, amen, the power to become the sons of God, the children of God. And everybody has to make that choice on their own. You can't, it's not by the will of man. It doesn't make any difference. You go up and shake somebody's hand, and they baptize you and write your name down on the ledger. Amen. If your heart did not confess out of your heart, if you did not believe, Amen. The gift of God and receive it. You weren't born again. And I think we have a lot of people in church, churches across the nation, where there's a lot of people sitting in the church that are not actually saved. In fact, I've uh, worked with this man for years, and uh, some of you in here probably know his name is Connie Perriman. As good a man as you'll ever meet. And he went to the First Baptist Church in here. I'm not knocking the best First Baptist Church, all right? That's where he went to church. Well, he's in a nursing home now. Well, he worked with me for, for several years. And when he when he got in the nursing home, I went to see him. And I was sitting on the bed, and he was sitting in his chair, and he took his head, and he said, Bill, I just want to talk to you about something. I just want to tell you, I'm, I'm a bad man. And I thought to myself, what are you talking about? Never known a man any better than you kind man, hard working man, family man, just, you know, he said, I'm a bad man. I've, I've done some things, you know, and, and he just began to confess to me, you know, and, and uh, uh, I said, Connie, all you need to do, I said, it's just accept Jesus. So, me and him prayed, and he said, thank you, Bill. Thank you. You see, he'd been going to that Baptist church for years. I know they gave him opportunity, chance after chance to make Jesus his Lord. I know they did. But whether it was pride or 
whatever it was that he had never went for or that he had never. I know that, I don't even, I don't know for sure he had been baptized on. But I know, I know that a lot of people got saved up there. I know he had an opportunity. Too many kids get baptized as a child and they. They do it because other kids are doing it or, or they don't really understand what they're doing. You're right. And then they're told once saved, always saved. Yeah. So they believe that they've made a confession of faith as a child and they never made a true confession. Yeah. That's right. But thanks be to God, he, does, he did make it possible through Jesus Christ, amen, that as many as received him, mm -hmm. to them, Gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Even to them that believe on his name. So, <laughs> thanks be to God for the born again experience. Amen. The life changing experience. The God experience. The life experience. And the life experience. Amen. And so, the word logos was the ultimate reason or rationale of the universe. Zoe, life, amen, hallelujah, which means the life of God. The life, amen, Jesus Christ, the creator, provided spiritual life. Jesus Christ, the redeemer, provided spiritual life. And Jesus Christ, the savior, provided eternal life. So he is life. In what degrees, amen, people receive it, it all comes from him. And that's the reason hell is called the second day. Because he ain't going to be there. He's here. His life is in this earth. Amen. Do you hear me? His life is in this earth. Okay. But hell is called the second day. And people are going to be dead in hell. But yet, they're going to feel, they're going to know, they're going to have mind, you know, they're going to have emotions. All of those things are going to be there, but there's not going to be any light there. No light and no light. Now, whether that darkness is literal darkness, I, I've seen in caves where you can, you can do this and you can see any kind of motion. Or whether it's a darkness like, like there is no light or understanding or feeling or emotion, no hope, no love, no faith. No joy, no peace, you know, no rest. All of those things are light, and they're light. We need to wake up and realize, and I know we do, that the most precious things that God has given to every man, every man, Things that money cannot buy. God has given every man the opportunity to have it. Some people don't have it because of darkness that's in their life. Joy, hope, peace, faith, love. Those things right there. It's, the world is seeking for those things. But they're trying their best to find them in, in things in it that, that can't provide it. Yes. And those are, that's just a free gift from God. Mm -hmm. To anybody, whosoever will just receive them, whosoever will believe them. Those are just free gifts that we enjoy every day. And we don't miss it until it's gone. Mm -hmm. You don't miss your peace until it's gone. You don't miss your joy until you get depressed down and out. You don't miss your joy. You don't miss love until, until somebody don't until you feel like you're not loved. It's a good, it's a good God. It's a good God. He's been so good to us. All right then. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Now, the King James Version says grace for grace. That's in verse 
16, but since we're here, we're going to talk about this. Verse 16, it says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. King James Version says, Grace for grace. The NIV Version says, One blessing after another. Hello. Amen. Ain't that kind of what we're talking about tonight? Yeah. One blessing right after another. Amen. One blessing right after another. Mm -hmm. The LB, well, I don't know what, what that is. Literal version. Literal version. Literal. Oh, literal. <laughs> literal. All right. It says, blessing upon blessings, heap the bonus. Blessing upon blessings, heap the bonus. And the NIT, NLT, NLT, one gracious blessing after another. Amen. So, uh, the Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the glory, uh, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, every man has life. He is the light that lies every man. Every man has light, but he was the light. And we seen the light in him. The world seen the light in him without any darkness in it. The glory as of the only begotten <coughs> of the Father. Just think, one of these days, we're going to see him face to face. One of the days we're going to see him in his, I'm talking about with the power turned up. I'm talking about in his full glory. In a, and he is going to be so bright. He's going to be brighter than the noonday sun. His glory is going to shine. We're going to see him. Amen. And we're going to recognize him when we see him. Ain't nobody going to tell you. You're going to ask, hey, who is that? You ain't going to be asking that. You're going to know who he is. You don't know who he is. I'm looking forward to it. Joe. I'll be honest with you, I am. I've been praying to see him, man. I don't say and, and I'm not asking him to appear to me, but I'm saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Lord, let me see you because the Bible teaches us that when we see him, we're changed into that image. In that likeness when we see him. And so, you know, when you look into the word and you see Jesus, just like we're talking about tonight. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I studied this and I began to see this, I, my, it did open my eyes to perspective. Yes, I already knew that he created everything. I already knew that. I already knew everything was of him. But I began to get, I began to just be, just more understanding of what I was looking at. I see you, Lord. I see you in a beautiful tree. I see you. The birds that come in my backyard, I see the birds out there, they come in there by the flock. Red birds and blue jays and, and blue birds and cow birds and all kinds of birds come in there. Squirrels. You know, I see the Lord. I see him in his creation. I see him. I see him in that. And, and, you know, I get a new perspective about seeing people. Amen. And, and everything. It just, you know, I just, it, it helps me. All right, then John bear witness of him and Christ, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. And so, of his fullness. So, I like it. I like it. Of his one blessing right after another blessing, we've all received it. Amen. One blessing upon a blessing heaped upon us. We've all received it. Now I'll tell you something about the Christian life. Especially when you walk with God in a relationship. It's not like anything else that you'll ever know. It don't get over. It's new and fresh and new and fresh, and new, and fresh, and new, and fresh. And that's the reason that you find people that are like me, that's been living for God ever since I was a teenager, amen, and it's better to me now, just as good to me now, just as exciting now, just, I want it just as much, if not more now, than I did then. And nothing else in 
this world is that way.